Hello, DFS family. Welcome back to the Sunday School NFL DFS podcast, powered by Fantasy Six Pack. That's right. Once again, I am your host, Pat Mikowski. You can find me on Twitter at PattyMac33. I am joined by my co-host, Mr. David Eddy, whom you can find on Twitter at Corporal Eddy. Now, before we get started, please do us a quick favor and hit that like button. If you enjoy this podcast, then do yourself a favor, hit that subscribe button. If you want to keep a leg up on all your buddies, swing on over to fantasysixpack.net and check out some more great content. Another victory, David, to finish out the year. Two out of the last three into the home stretch for me. And uh, this is going to be the last week that we're doing this this season. Yeah, man, this will be it. Week 17 is an absolute crapshoot. Um, I mean, I will play some DFS, but it's going to be probably pretty light. Um, you know, there's just so much randomness that goes on. The You know, NFL DFS itself is already pretty volatile, but... In week 17, um, it just gets real crazy. So I'll be playing, but it's just not the same. Yeah, it's uh, week 17 is always uh, pretty chaotic, you know, with uh, the playoffs, you know, pretty well set and people sitting and exactly you know, taking yeah. some breaks and getting fresh and healthy and, yeah, guys, and all that good stuff. Yeah, guys will play the first half of a game, and it's just it's just really it's just really tough. Like I said, unless there's a lot of just really dead obvious plays, um, you know, it'll it'll still be light because when there's those dead obvious plays and everyone else is just doing it too, so you really don't have any sort of an advantage. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll be shying away. Right. So, first off, hope that everybody had a very Merry Christmas um, and got to you know, spend uh, either some time with some family, some friends, or, or maybe most people did what uh, what we chose to do was the virtual thing. Um, but since we're talking about Christmas, Davey, let's get into that Virgin Mary question of the week this week. All right, let's do it. What do we got? All right. The last one for the season is, how do I figure out how many lineups to enter into a contest and how many times should you enter an identical contest into the same contest. Yeah, I think that this question actually um, is going to lead to what the week one question next year is going to be, and, and that's going to be a, a discussion on contest selection because you know no matter how much we you know talk about our plays and, and all that stuff, if you're not playing the right contest, um, especially for your bankroll and just the, you know, the skill level that you're at, you, you very well could be just playing a losing battle. (laughs) Right. Um, and it, and it's a long conversation, so I don't want to get into it right now, especially, you know, week 16. So, but I think that'll be where we'll start next year is contest selection and, and go over that. But, um, how do you figure out how many lineups to enter into a contest is the first part of that question. For me, I think it's pretty simple. Um, If you're playing in a contest, then you need to maximize the number of entries that that means. So whether that's 1, 3, 7, 14, 20, 150, whatever it is, you should max it. And if that is out of your bankroll, then you probably shouldn't do it. Um, The only exception to that rule, at least for myself, is... Most weeks, I will throw my favorite lineup into the Millie Maker, just kind of hoping to, you know, get lucky and hit lightning in a bottle, but I can afford to do that. So, you know, whether it's the typical 20 bucks or whether it's, you know, 10 bucks sometimes, um, you know, I'll usually throw at least one in there. I think I've thrown as many as five to eight in there if, I, if there's something I really like. But basically, if you, if you can't max the contest out, you, you shouldn't be playing it. Um, how many times should you enter an identical, um, lineup into the same contest? I would say you should never do that. Um, you know, part of the advantage of, you know, MMEs, which is, you know, what we're talking about here is the fact that you're putting, you know, multiple, typically 20, um, you know, 
educated lineups into the contest trying to win. You know, um, you know, the way that I play is I'm not entering these contests trying to win my money back or trying to double my money. I'm, I'm literally trying to win. Um, and by default, you know, doing that a lot of times, especially, you know, if you're fairly good at, at this, you will, you know, break even at worst anyways. But, you know, I'm playing to win. So I wouldn't want, you know, two or three or 10 or 20 of the same lineup in there. Um, because that's actually lessening my chances, um, I think, because I don't have the 20, you know, unique, well-thought-out lineups. Yeah, that's crazy to me, because every once in a while you see that uh, where you're taking a look at, you know, maybe the top 10 or 20 guys that are finishing in a contest, and somehow they have the same lineup in there. Yeah, I uh, mean... And they're it, twice the amount of money. It just it blows my mind uh, that they could even do that. I mean, there is a strategy to it. Um, I mean, there are definitely people that will sit there and, and, you know, do a a contest where they'll max it out, but they will play the, the same lineup for all their entries. And I mean, for me, like I said earlier, you know, um, you know, this is already a pretty volatile sport as it is. So that's why, you know, I like to almost exclusively play the, you know, the 20 maxes and whatnot. I even shy away from like the single entry for the most part. But if you did happen to, you know, pick the right lineup and that lineup did really well, putting all your eggs in one basket is a way to, you know, win a lot of money. But the odds of, you know, that one lineup just happening to be amazing is is really kind of a losing proposition. Um, you'd really have to have quite a bankroll to be able to throw that one lineup in that contest because if it doesn't cash, which, you know, I guess odds are it's not going to, you're not going to win a dime. You know, at least part of the beauty of throwing 20 in there is, you know, yeah, you're hoping that one of them hits and, you know, you can win a, you know, a ton of money. But in reality, a lot of times what will happen is, you know, five or eight of them will do well and you'll win a little bit of money. Maybe you double your money, but, um, you know, you're, you're still making some money back at, at worst case scenario. Yeah. So, you know, speaking of making some money, let's see what we can do about helping some people out this weekend. Yeah. I mean, uh, I've got a chub just thinking about it. <laughs> Speaking of your gospel, why don't you go ahead? Oh yeah, well, speaking of it, uh, Nick Chubb, seventy eight hundred bucks. Uh, Browns take it on the Jets. I mean, for me, it's really simple. Um, you know, we talk about my you know DFS rules, and number one is of course you know play good players. Uh, number two thing we're looking at is volume over matchup. Well, in this case, Nick Chubb, you're playing a good player, of course. He's gonna get an ridiculous amount of volume. I'll get into that here in just a second. And it's not even volume over matchup because the matchup is also fantastic. So, you know, this just checks every box this week. Um, News came out recently. We're doing this Saturday night. Um, It's almost 10 o'clock right now here. Um, And the news is out that every healthy receiver except for Marvin Hall, who actually was a very recent waiver wire pickup for the Browns, Every other wide receiver is out for COVID-19 protocol. So that means that Nick Chubb is going to get every single carry he can handle and probably a few more on top of that. Like I said, this this play just checks all the boxes. He is expensive, but he is a stud. So I'm going to say, you know, a lot of times with the, the gospel for me, I say don't overthink things. And I think this is an example of don't overthink things just you know jam chubb into your lineups with some confidence (laughs) yeah you know uh when i saw that pop out this morning too that was that was the first thing that i was thinking of is okay uh they're gonna turn around they're gonna hand the rock off a lot um so nick chubb obviously a great pick And, and for my for my gospel you know i went a little bit different than what i usually do and this is this is more about value for me um you know and as david mentioned uh, there is absolutely nobody for Baker Mayfield to throw the ball to. So my gospel for this week is Austin Hooper, tight end, thirty five hundred bucks. Um, you know, Chubb, like you said, is going to have a unbelievably solid game, but Baker is still going to have to throw the ball. And there's forty four million reasons 
that Hooper needs to step it up this week and become that big time target that Cleveland signed him to be. And they're playing the Jets. New York has given up an embarrassing 27 fantasy points a game over the last four weeks to tight ends. That's six points higher than the second worst team. They are atrocious when it comes to covering tight ends. I'm anticipating Hooper is going to easily see north of 10 targets in this one. And at that price tag of $3,500, this is going to be money very well spent. If Hooper can't get it right in this matchup, especially being that he's going to be Baker's only real option downfield, he may as well pack up his bag and hightail it out of town. You know, I mean, I haven't thoroughly read the notes, um, you know, for our podcast here today, but even just the two Gospels is kind of in a nutshell what makes DFS really fun and also potentially really frustrating is because you and I are literally on opposite sides of the coin here. And we both can make a very strong argument that, you know, we are absolutely correct and the other person is absolutely wrong. Oddly enough... We also could both be wrong, and we both could be right. Um, and I think that that's kind of going to be the theme as we go through the notes this week. And you know, and that's why for me personally, you know, I like to get as much information as I can, and then kind of filter through it and and make my own decisions. You know, um, you know, I it would be really hard to ever rely on any one person's opinion or any one particular stat or, you know, something like that, because there's so many different ways that you can either be successful or that you can lose your ass in in DFS. So you really got to have an open mind, um, you know, and be open to, to trying new things and taking things that maybe, you know, you were completely against at one point in time and turning it into something that, you know, you rely on. So, um, you know, I'm saying Nick Chubb, you're saying Austin Hooper, both of them make sense and they both could be right or they both could be wrong or anything in between. It's just, it's, it's really interesting. Yeah. Uh, I totally agree. Um, and, and it's, you know, let's, let's move on to the, to the devil this week. Yeah. Cause um, this is a perfect example of where we could not disagree anymore. Um, the guy that is your devil, I very well could have put in as my core play because he might end up being the highest owned guy for me this entire week. But I also could then argue to say, well, you get a, a ton of leverage by going off of him. Um, but anyways, why, why don't you get into your devil? Yeah, so, you know, obviously uh... – this this guy is uh, an elite talent at the wide receiver position. There's no question about that. Uh, I'm talking about Kelvin Ridley uh, at $8,500, Falcons at the Chiefs. He is the third highest priced player on the entire slate this weekend. Kansas City is giving up the fifth fewest points to opposing wide receivers over the last four weeks. No Julio Jones for Atlanta, so it would appear that Ridley is going to get a few more targets his way. Uh, but I just got a feeling Matt Ryan is going to be running for his life in this one, and he can't throw the ball from his back. KC is second in the NFL in QB knockdowns per pass attempt. I just don't like the matchup or that crazy price tag at 8500 bucks. I think there are a lot better options, um, safer options at the position. Uh, I'm just going to stay away from Ridley this weekend. I mean, I can list a, a whole handful of people that do some of their best work on their back, but um, I would say an NFL quarterback is not one of them. Right. With that being said, I, I would 1 million percent disagree with you here. Um, as I had said, when Julio is out, Calvin Ridley is an absolute mega stud. He, he's probably going to be the most owned player this week, which, again could make it to where if he, you know, is going to be so highly owned and he doesn't have a big game, I mean, you're looking at, what, 34 points to get to 4X. Certainly not impossible, but it's going to take a little bit of work. I mean, I can see Matt Ryan throwing the ball. God, I mean, 30 is a guarantee. 40 is extremely possible. 50 wouldn't shock me. I mean, they're just going to have to run and run and run and run and run and run. Or let me take that back. Pass and pass and pass. Um, so I don't know, man. Uh, 
yeah, I mean, I, I disagree, but if you end up being correct, then you already have a massive head start on the field. Um, and if you then hit on wherever you spent that money, you're, you're going to be in prime, sh- prime shape, you know. But if you're wrong, heaven forbid the guy that you pivot to doesn't do well and Ridley does, then you're, you're drawn dead as well. So, um, like I said, really interesting week, I think, this week, especially with our notes. But my devil this week, um, I mean, I, I felt this way since last week whenever, um, you know, Clyde Edward Hilaire went down with an injury and Le'Veon Bell came in and people were already starting to say, oh man, is Le'Veon going to be, you know, chalk next week? And even at that point, I thought to myself, well, you know, $5,000 range is about probably where I, I could see myself playing him, but he's going to be higher than that. So I'll probably be out on him. And of course, Le'Veon Bell this week comes in at 5800 bucks. So... I mean, no question he's going to be the lead running back in KC this week. Um, but that Falcons defense has been surprisingly really good over the last uh, month of the season. Uh, so like I said, you know, at almost 6K, I, I just I just can't see myself playing him. Uh, I mean, KC is going to pass the ball a lot, especially in this game. I mean, odds are they're going to get ahead and, uh, you know, Falcons are going to be, you know, playing some catch up, which is why they're going to throw the ball so much. Um, we're hoping that they're scoring so that KC has the score. Um, but I mean, I just don't see Bell putting up basically 24 points, which is what he needs to get to the four X. And if I can't even really envision that happening, there's just no way that I'm going to play him. Yeah. Well, let's, let's go ahead and stay right there then, Dave. Why don't you go ahead and, uh, what's your pivot? Yeah. So, I mean, Opposite side of the backfield. Um, my, my pivot this week is Ito Smith. Uh, he's coming in at 4K. Um, you know, this is interesting. He has taken over as a lead back in Atlanta, um, which really should be better news than what it is. I mean, unfortunately, you know, the Atlanta Falcons don't run the ball a whole lot. And Smith is not really a great receiver out of the backfield. Uh, like I think this is going to be a very high scoring back and forth, you know, passing type game. But I mean, listen, man, the fact that, you know, Ito Smith is the guy in, in that backfield and he's only 4k kind of almost means he has to play for me this week. Um, you know, and not, I'm not going to be crazy. He's not going to be my highest owned running back by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but you know, if you want to pay up for, you know, my home stack, for example, you know, having Ito is your run back as opposed to Ridley is, is is kind of I wouldn't say necessary, but I mean you've got to save money somewhere. Um, so you know, even if you don't, you know, it still allows you to pay up somewhere else. Um, so I mean, he's going to be a strong consideration for me. I don't know exactly where he's going to lie, but sixteen points is all he's going to need to hit that 4x value. I mean, if he falls in for a touchdown, there's six already. He needs 10 more. A couple catches, you know, 50 yards running, and he, he's there. So, um, you know, price tag and, and volume, you know, um, kind of leads me to, to that pivot. Yeah, and Kansas City, you know, hasn't been, you know, all that great against running backs. I mean, they're – what, almost 25 points a game I'm seeing over the last four weeks. Um, and the fact that, you know, Todd Gurley has not been existent to begin with in that offense. Um, Edo Smith has just kind of emerged under the new interim coach as, as the guy. So uh, really good value, like you said, at the $4,000 mark there. So. Um, in what appears, you know, and could be a, a pretty high scoring game, as you mentioned. Um, so my pivot this week, uh, you know, between our gospels, our devil and our pivots, we're, we're talking about two football games here. Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> um, my pivot, uh, is Sam Darnold, 5,000 bucks, the Browns at the Jets. Now Vegas opened the Browns up favored by 10 in New York. Um, But the Jets are on a winning streak, Dave. And they poo-pooed all over the Rams playoff hope last weekend. And 
for Cleveland to clinch a playoff first berth, they have to win or tie against the Jets and get help. The and they have an nobody to throw the ball to, as we mentioned. <laughs> Literally. Right. I mean, right. I, I, I'm pretty sure I got a missed call from their GM. It's possible. They're looking for help. You know, the Jets have an opportunity to play spoiler again. And Cleveland has been ninth worst against opposing QBs over the last four weeks. And Darnold has a full complement of healthy wide receivers this yeah, weekend. Crowder, impairment, and Mims. Now the Jets will find themselves in a familiar spot behind, as we said. Figure Nick Chubb is going to get some heavy work. They're going to pound the ball. They're going to put it into the end zone. So Sam's going to get to chuck that rock. Hey, Davey, it's 2020, buddy, and anything is possible. I got Sam Darnold as my pivot value play. 5000 bucks against uh, the Brownies. And I gotta tell you, I've always been the idiot that has been a huge fan. I shouldn't say huge fan. I've been a fan of the Jets and especially their wide receivers this year. I have probably played either Crowder, Paramin, or Mims every week, um, just because they make a nice run back option. Just because they're always behind, and they have to throw the ball and yada yada yada. Now, granted, it's only paid off. I think like once, maybe twice. But, yeah, I mean, I could definitely see it. The only thing that I would say is with all the news, you know, about everyone from the Browns being out, I think that that could very easily turn that game into an absolute shit show. Um, And when I say shit show, I mean, like, you know, 13 to 10 or something like that to where, you know, there just aren't enough points being scored. However, I don't know what Darno's going to have for ownership, but I bet you it's going to be really low. And, I mean, damn, if he throws for 250 and three touchdowns and you paid five grand for him and you hit the rest of your lineup, I mean, you definitely could win some money there. It's not. It's definitely not insane. Um, I mean, you're going to be one of the few people that do it. So, you know, when it comes to DFS, like I said, I'm not trying to break even or double my money. I'm trying to win a tournament. And, you know, Sam Darno is not going to be a guy I would invest a lot in. But that that literally is the kind of nonsense that that can happen that can lead you down a path that nobody else went down, and that 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 can be how you win things. Yeah. So for for a contrarian play this week, you know I'm going to stick at that position too. Uh, I got another quarterback, um, and he, he goes by the name of Russell Wilson. Isn't he a baseball school? player? He is a baseball player. That is right. He's playing football this weekend, though, at least hopefully, because he hasn't over the last six <laughs> weekends. Um, but he's seventy three hundred bucks, and the Seahawks got the Rams coming to town. Uh, you know, Big Russ. We've talked about him a few times over the course of the last several weeks. Yeah, uh, he's just he's not he's not producing the same way he did. You know, the first ten games of the season. Uh, when he was on that MVP type tear. Um, in fact, in his last six games, he's only scored more than 18 fantasy points twice. Um, and in his last matchup against the Rams, which happened to be uh, the best defense in the NFL when it comes to stopping opposing quarterbacks, yeah, they are. Russ put up a pathetic 12.92 points back in week 10. The Rams are only giving up 11 fantasy points a game to quarterbacks over the last four. They're second in the NFL with 44 sacks this season. And Wilson has taken the third most in the NFL with 40. This is a matchup nightmare for Wilson. And because of that, I've just got that feeling he's going to be really low owned, especially considering he's still the fifth most expensive quarterback on a slate this week. The guy's talent is off the charts. His weapons are impressive. His offense has got to start clicking again down the home stretch and into the playoffs. Plus, they have an opportunity to clinch the NFC West with a win over the Rams. I like Big Russ to get it together and put up some points against the Rams. I mean, I like it, you know, Russell Wilson to like a like a freshly made loaf of bread. Like, they're both extremely underrated, and they very rarely disappoint. 
that that's a great analogy. I, I mean, I'm hungry, so um, I I try. Let, let me get to a much <laughs> less sexy pick here. And the contrarian is always really hard for me. Um, and this week I actually just struggled to find someone that qualified, in my opinion, as a contrarian. Um, and so the guy that I landed on, I landed on specifically because I just can't believe that his ownership just continues to be at the level that it is. And I know that he's kind of like not a very well-known name by any any stretch but i mean chad hansen um texans wide receiver 4400 bucks this week against the Bengals, and i am just not quite sure why he hasn't been more popular um and why he's not projected to be more popular as far as ownership is concerned again this week going up against a a terrible Bengals defense i mean hansen has been getting his more than fair share of targets. Um, and there's no reason to think he won't get them again this week. I mean, if he gets into the end zone, he is, again, just an absolutely amazing value here at only 4.4. So, I mean, is he going to break the slate and, you know, get you 200 yards and two touchdowns? Well, no. But has he got a really good chance of getting you value um, you know, saving you money and allowing you to do other things. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to say contrarian just simply because he is going to be under owned again. Yeah. And up until three weeks ago, yeah, absolutely was, nobody yeah, had he, any idea who Chad Hansen even was. No, he delivered so. my Buffalo wild wings. Um, when I ordered them from <laughs> Uber eats, right, that's right. I didn't tip him. I feel terrible about it now. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, I, I don't think that he's uh, hurting a whole lot for tips. Um, but, yeah, up until three weeks ago, I didn't have a clue who this guy fucking was. Yeah, most um, people don't still. Nothing but consistent. Uh, I mean, yeah. well, he, he's put up over, what, 12, 12 or 13 points a game in all three? 13? What the hell am I looking at here? I mean, uh, if he's only 4,400. 13.5. I mean... Seven targets, seven targets. I'm usually like three targets, but he finds the end zone. Yeah, so he's been fine, man. Um, he's you know he's catching passes from mate. Well, one of the most underrated QBs in the league, Deshaun yeah. Watson. I mean, Watson is playing at an unbelievable level this year. I mean, yeah, you, yeah. I mean, he is like it's it's kind of unfortunate that like the MVPs you know stuff kind of goes the way it goes, where MVP really is just like a stats driven thing. Because guys like, you know, uh, maybe I'm biased here, but guys like Matthew Stafford and Deshaun Watson, I mean, they really are your most valuable player. I mean, you take, you know, those guys off their teams and their teams are horseshit, you know. I mean, you take Patrick Mahomes off the Chiefs, well, they're not as good, but they're making the playoffs. You take Matthew Stafford off the Lions, you take Deshaun Watson off the Texans, and they're going to be getting ready to draft Trevor Lawrence with the number one pick, you know. I mean... Anyways, that's not DFS related. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay in that same game though for my hail mary, Dave. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it's at the same position. It's just on the other side of the ball. Yep. And, and I'm gonna roll with AJ Green. Uh, he's coming in at 3,400 bucks. Uh, Houston has given up over 40 points a game to opposing wide receivers over the last four weeks. Uh, I saw that Tyler Boyd is out this weekend. Is that is that um, official or no? I believe that is official. Okay. I saw a big O next to his name. Okay, I'm gonna look it up um, real quick because that changes things for me. But you you keep going on. I'm gonna verify that real quick. Yeah, I'm verifying it right now. He has been ruled out because of a concussion. Yeah, I know he was. Yeah, because I've been looking at T Higgins, but yeah. So no yep. Boyd. Hmm. Uh, since he's gonna have to throw the ball to keep pace with Watson and company. A.J. Green's target share goes up, obviously, in Boyd's absence. Uh, he only needs 14 points to hit that magic 4X threshold. So he's only seven catches away from that. Uh, and last weekend, Finley at QB threw the ball Green's way 25% of his pass attempts. Um, it's going to be a high-scoring game. I see him airing it out. Finley actually impressed me last weekend. I, I I thought the kid did pretty well. No, you're easily impressed then. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, just, you know, the eye test. He, he can move the ball down the there field. You go. He's good. He can run his legs. You know, he, 
I, I like him in that offense. I like AJ Green at that price. Um, I think he's going to get a lot of targets with Boyd out. Um, Thirty four hundred bucks. I mean, here, here's one thing that I will say, and I don't want to give too much away, I suppose, but um, you know, so, something to think about is just because a wide receiver, for example, is out. It does not automatically mean that, you know, it's next guy up. You know, it doesn't mean that Higgins is automatically going to get more targets or A.J. Green is going to get more targets or, you know, Drew Sample is going to get more targets. It, it literally could mean that they just change the offense and all of a sudden they run the ball more often or, or something like that. So I will say that A.J. Green has definitely been, been popping into um, my lineups as I've been, you know, going through and researching this week and, I don't like it, um, but I mean, thirty four hundred dollars. I mean, he's superiorly talented to Chad Hansen. Um, Chad Hansen's in a much better position, but with AJ Boyd being out, um, I, I I don't know if I prefer Green or not more. Like I said, I don't necessarily think it's a you know it's a you know Boyd loses targets and Higgins and, and Green automatically gain them. Not not in this particular situation. Um, but AJ Green, yeah, for thirty four hundred bucks, man. I mean, that's <laughs> that's not a bad play at all. Um, I mean, I, I've got another receiver from a game that we've talked about is is my long shot, and I'm I'm saying McCole Hardman, man. He's thirty one hundred bucks, which is mind blowing to me. Um, but he's thirty one hundred bucks. Um, you know, Chiefs against the Falcons. I mean, he's almost like a, and I I know this is gonna sound crazy, but he's almost like a Tyree Kill light to me, like. He's the same type player. He just, you know, he's not as talented and certainly doesn't get the opportunity. But, I mean, the two fastest guys in the NFL are Tyree Kill and McCole Hardman, man. He put them on the field at the same time. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, it's it's ridiculous, man. And, listen, if I'm fading Bell anyways, and I'm obviously fading that Chiefs running game, then, I mean, you, obviously you're going to bet your ass that I'm on the passing game. Uh, Hill and Kelsey are popular, obviously. Um, but Hardman, interestingly enough, and maybe this is just a fluke, it probably is, but he had nine targets last week. Now, again, I don't have any clue if that's going to repeat itself or not, but, but, you know, I'm not necessarily going to bet on it, but I mean, man, slipping Hardman in with a few of these Mahomes stacks or even just, you know, running him as a one-off has a ton of upside. Um, I mean, there's not many guys in the NFL, even though it doesn't happen often that, that have the big playability that he has. And it's a combination of just his, you know, his speed and, you know, the offense that he's in. So it just takes one big play and he has hit his value instantly. Um, so, I mean, I think that he makes for a really good play this week. And, you know, he might be under 5% owned. So, you know, he's a little bit maybe higher owned than a typical Hail Mary, I suppose. But, I mean, again, he's 3100 bucks. He catches a 70-yard touchdown pass and... There's, there's your value right there, right off the top. And that is not a lot to ask for him um, in all reality, you know? So, you know, they got Tyree Kill listed as questionable. Um, Kansas City is literally playing for nothing right now. They've got. Yeah, their game means absolutely done. nothing. Win or lose means so, nothing. It's next week's game. I mean. God if, damn it, you're going to talk me into more McCole Hardman than I'm comfortable with. Patrick, just stop. So, just, I didn't want so you to continue. Come on, Dave. Come on, Davey. You know, I mean, let's say Andy Reid decides to rest the guy so he's healthy. Or let's say they get up 40 to 3. I mean, how how much value does that add to a guy like Nicole Oh, Hardman? man, I'm going to hate you come Monday. Because <laughs> I'm going to sit there and now all of a sudden, like, McCole Hardman, I was getting him. He was popping after, like, 50% of my lineups. And I'm, I'm, like, just not comfortable with that at all. And I dropped him down. I capped him at... I kept him at 15 because at 15, that's where I'm comfortable. And if you're not going to be a son of a bitch and make me put it up to like 25 or 30 percent, uh, I forgot that I, mean, I forgot that Hill was a little hampered. Yeah. And, and I forgot that this game is borderline irrelevant to them. God damn it. Huh? Yeah. I guess that makes my Hail Mary pick even better. Ba -boom, tis. Yeah, I, I would agree. Uh, I would agree. <laughs> All right. Anyways. Um, well, I think that's about it, Dave. Yeah. Uh, before before we take off, though, I just wanted to uh, 
you know, wish everybody a, once again, uh, hope you all had a very Merry Christmas, a happy new year, a safe new year, uh, coming up. Uh, and, and Davey, you know, when you asked me to do this last year, like the middle of the season, uh, I didn't know what, what I had in store for myself or what I was getting myself into. Uh, but I gotta say, man, this is one of the most fun things that I get a chance to do with my spare time. Um, and I just want to say thanks for letting me be a part of it. I have an absolute blast doing it. I know that we both live pretty hectic, crazy lives and our schedules are messed up and, and somehow, some way we find time every week to, <laughs> yeah. to get this uh, thing done. Um, but I, like I said, I just want to say thanks, man. And, and I really truly do enjoy it. Um, and I'm looking forward, uh, to next year. Uh, and some of the things that we've got in store for everybody. Oh man, I don't know. Do you want me to spoil a couple things for for next year, or shall I we mean, wait? Yeah, may, maybe leave them hanging with something. All right. Well, I'll say at the bare minimum, we have a new logo that's ready to go. Um, so that's I I guess that's exciting. I don't know. Probably not. Uh, maybe it's more. Maybe the more name. exciting for us. Yeah, exactly. Um, but we're also going to roll out a new format um, next year. And I think that it is actually going to be able to provide a much wider scope of information and thoughts and give you much more to think about than what we than what we currently do. So um, I, I don't think it's going to make the podcast any longer, but you're going to get a lot more information just in little quicker bursts. But, um, but you know, I, I will finish off myself by, by saying that truly, I don't think that I would rather do this podcast with anyone but yourself, Patrick. Um, I mean, we have a, a good time with it, uh, not just on air, but, but off it as well. Um, you know, it, you know, we, we've, We've been friends for a long time, and if anything, this has kind of reunited us a little bit, you know. Um, I agree. I agree. And and it's a good time, man. And you know, I really just enjoy even more than anything just the side conversations and whatnot that you know that that it gets us throughout the week and you know on Sundays and you know we're rooting for each other when you know we, we're we've got something you know in play come Sunday afternoon, you know. So we'll. We'll go back. The only time we usually don't go back and forth on Sunday is if we're both losing our ass. And <laughs> yeah, then we're just like, ah, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. But if one of us is doing well, um, you know, those phones are blowing up, man. And, and I always I always look forward to getting a text from you at some point on Sunday, um, right. you know, hoping that, you know, you're talking about how you're going to be able to buy me, you know, buy me some Omaha steaks. Yeah, some diamond jewelry. Yeah, so, yeah, man, I, I appreciate it, man. I have a blast doing this with you. Um, I, I literally wouldn't care to do this with anybody else, so I appreciate you, man. Uh, I appreciate that, Davey. And uh, on that, before we get all mushy and soppy, uh, we'll send everybody off for the weekend. Happy New Year. Stay safe. We'll see you all later.